Good morning, good morning, good morning. Come on in. Good morning, come on in, come on in. Good morning, come on in quickly. Share the broadcast as you come on in. Type share on the screen. Good morning to all of you. Well, actually, good afternoon. It's afternoon, sorry. It is afternoon. Listen, come on in. I don't have much time, but I have to give you the word of the Lord. Um, come on in quickly. Blessings to all of you. Blessings to all of you. I'm gonna jump right on in because I don't have um I don't have in as much time as I would like. Um, blessings to all of you. Come on in. Come on in. Share the broadcast. Type share on the screen. Good to see all of you. Good to see all of you. Blessings, blessings. Come on in. Let's go into a quick word of prayer. And we're going to jump right on into what it is that the Lord is saying to me. Father, we give you praise. We give you the glory. We give you the honor that is due unto your name. Father, we magnify you. We praise you. We glorify you. Father, as I come before your people to deliver your word. As you spoke unto me, I pray, Father God, that it will come through with clarity, that it will come through, Father God, and that your people will receive it, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you all of the praise, the glory, and the honor that is due unto your name, for there is no one else like you. We magnify you, for you are great, you are worthy, and there is none like you. Somebody come on and magnify the Lord with me. Come on, somebody, I need somebody to magnify the Lord with me, for he is great and he is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you for coming on in. Come on, I need somebody to share this broadcast. Come on, quickly, just type, type share. Share it. Somebody start a watch party. Uh, this is going to be real quick, but I need you to get this today. I really need you to get this today. Come on, somebody. Share the broadcast. Let me know that you are here. Start a watch party. Blessings to all of you. Good to see you today. I want to talk to you a little bit about what it is that God was saying to me. And as you can see with the topic, I'm like, did God really tell you to say this? And so many persons may be wondering what it is that I'm about to say. And some people may be drawn to the topic and out of curiosity. And so come on in. There's word for you. Come on, whether you're just curious, whether you're coming to just hear what it is that God is saying or what it is that Mava is saying. Listen, come on in. Share the broadcast. You don't want to miss this. Uh, go ahead and tag some people that you know are usually tuning in, but they are not uh, are on the live feed right at this moment. Go ahead. Tag them in the live feed. Call their names. Uh, go ahead. Um, start a watch party. I want to get this to you. And good afternoon to you once again. And thank you for sharing. May God continue to bless you. I want to talk to you today from the book of Ezekiel. You all know the book of Ezekiel is a really serious book. This book, I was afraid to fool with it for a very long time in my Christian walk. And, and then when I began to dive into it, I, have to, I had to ask the Holy Spirit for insight. Because there were many things like the book of Revelation that will literally, you know, speak to your spirit and shake you. And so the book of Ezekiel basically shakes the Christian, the believer. And so today I want to come on and I just want to shake you just for a minute, just to get you to the point where uh, 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 you reset, to, to, to recalibrate you, to bring you to the point of starting again or starting from a place of order. And so today I want to talk to you a little bit and I got to go, but I'm not going to be long today because I got to go. But I want to give you this as the Lord began to speak to me. Blessings to all of you. Thank you for coming on in. I want to read in your here and I need you to get this Ezekiel chapter 33 and I'm going to read from verses 1 to 10. Somebody type that on the screen. I'm going to read from Ezekiel uh, chapter 33. Ezekiel chapter 33. And I'm going to read uh, from verses 33. Ver um, chapter 33, sorry, to from verses 1 to 10. And I need you to hear me and I need you to really hear me. Come on, share the broadcast. Uh, uh, Ezekiel chapter 33, verses 1 to 10. And it says, the word of the Lord came to me. This is Ezekiel now. The word of the Lord came to me. Verse 2 says, son of man, speak to your people and say to them, when I bring the sword, speak to your people and say to them, when I bring the sword against a land and the people of the land choose one of their men and make him and make him their watchman. And he sees the sword coming against the land and blows the trumpet to warn the people. Then if anyone hears the trumpet but does not heed the warning and the words and, and the sword comes and takes their lives. Come on and take their lives. Their blood will be on their own head. Verses 5. Since there. Verse 5 says. 
Ah, uh, let's go, let's go, let's go. I'm trying to read this and hurry up, get the point to you. Verse 5 goes on to say, uh, Since they heard the, the, the sound of the trumpet, but did not heed the warning, their blood will be on their own head. If they had heeded the warning, they would have saved their lives, saved themselves. But if, verse 6, but if the watchman sees the sword coming and does not blow the trumpet to warn the people, and the sword comes and takes uh, someone's life, that person's life will be taken because of their sin. But I will hold the watchman accountable for their blood. Verse 7 goes on to say, Son of man, I have made you a watchman for the people of Israel. So hear the word I speak and give them warning for me. When I say to the wicked, you will, when I say to the wicked, you wicked person, you will surely die. And you do not speak out to dissuade uh, uh, them from their ways. That wicked person will die for their sin. And I will hold you accountable for their blood. But if you do warn the wicked person to turn from their ways, to turn from their ways, and they do not come on somebody and they do not do so, they will die for their sins, though you you yourself will be saved. Amen. And I wanted to read this in your hearing today. And you may say what it is that you're talking about today, woman of God, uh, man of God. I want to speak directly to the spirit, to your spirit today. And for many of you, the Lord has called you to be a watchman. For many of you, the Lord has called you as an intercessor. For many of you, the Lord has called you into prayer. For many of you, the Lord has basically put you on a reset or restart. For many of you, the Lord is basically reviving you from the place that you was. He's taking you from that ashes. He's taking you from the dust. He's taking you from the mud, the muck, and the mary clay. And he literally is making you over. And so for many of us, we're coming to the place of the realization now that we must heed the word of God. But I want to speak to the watchmen. I want to speak to the, to the remnant. And I want to speak to those that uh, God is speaking to and he's using in this season. Listen, what God is about to do in this season is very, very very, very important when it comes to the body of Christ. What God is saying, did he really say this to you? Did he really speak this thing to you? And I want to dive into this because for a lot of us, the Lord would be speaking to us to declare certain things to the body of Christ, to the world, to the nations, to the states, to the islands, to the cities, to the keys, wherever you are. And God has been speaking to you to do certain things. And because you've been watching the faces of the people, or you've been over, or or, or, or someone else has been over you, or is a, a, a the head of you, and telling you that, no, this is not your time, this is not your season, and this is not the time to do this, and this is not the time to do that. But of According to the word of God, it says, listen, if I choose you to be a watchman over these people and I give you a word of warning to give to the people and you refuse to give the people the warning that I give to you through you to the people. And he says, if you fail to do that, he says, yes, they will die for their sins. Yes, they will die. He says, but their blood will be upon your hand. He says, I will require it from you. He says that you will be accountable, meaning that you will have to give an answer when you stand before the Savior as of to why you didn't give the people the warning that the Lord told you to give to them. And so, woman of God, man of God, I want to speak to you today. What is it that God said to you that you are not doing? Can I declare to you today that God is going to require the blood of the people from you? He is going to hold you accountable. And so, for many of you, I came to shake you up this afternoon to tell you to wake up. It's time to get up. It's time to get to whatever it is that God has told you to do. It's time now to get up out of your slumber. It's time to get out of these houses of Ichabod. It's time now to get out of these dead situations. It's now time to get out of these uh, 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 repetitive cycles where you're doing the same thing over and over and over and over again and getting absolutely no response, no change, nothing. And so what God is saying is that many of you, it's time to wake up because I've been speaking to you. I've been speaking to you in dreams and visions. 
silence. I've been speaking to you audibly. I've been speaking to you. It's time for you to move. It's time for you to um, embrace your ministry. It's time now for you to get in the field and begin to work and begin to do what I call you to do. God says, I'm going to hold you accountable. I'm going to hold you accountable for the children that I place in your life. I'm going to hold you accountable for the members that I send to you. I'm going to hold you accountable for the women that I send to you. I'm going to hold you accountable for the men that I send to you. I'm going to hold you accountable for the people that I send to you. The hurting, the loss. Come on, somebody. The people that I send to you to mentor. The people I send you to point to me. The people I send to, to, to you to clean up and show them the right path. He says, I'm going to hold you accountable. We like to sit back and watch what it is that people do and what they say and this and that and we are afraid to offend we are afraid to, 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 to be despised we are afraid to be hated we want to be loved we want to be liked we want to be accepted on Facebook we want to be accepted on Twitter we want to be accepted come on somebody on Instagram we want to be friendly on the job we want everyone to like us but guess what you were not called to be liked you were not called to be like everyone else you were called to be set aside to, to, to be set apart from the rest God called you from among them. He called you from among them. And we are afraid to offend. But it's time now to get into your ministry. It is time for you to wake up. Because what is happening now is we've been preaching this watered down gospel. We've been doing things the way that people wanted us to do us because they tied a little hundred dollars because they bring in a little seed and because they do this and they do that now. We think now that it's okay uh, uh, for, 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 for us now to just water down the gospel of God. It's time now for us to wake up. When God give you a word, you got to speak to the people as if uh, as God give you the word. You cannot sugarcoat the word of God. You cannot sugarcoat what it is that God is telling you. Woman of God, man of God, God give you the vision. Go ahead and release what it is that God has given you. You were not called to be liked. And so for many of us, because we won't be liked, because we have the desire to please everyone, and we have this desire to do uh, uh, what the pastor's saying, what prophet's saying, what prophet is saying, I got to run this scripture by prophet is first, and I got to call pastor first and see if it's okay. But God already spoke to you. And for many of you, you've been sitting down on the word of God. You've been sitting down. And so, so for many of you, God has already turned you over into a reprobate mind. Because he's been speaking to you for so long. The Holy Spirit has been nudging you for so long. The, 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 the Lord has been trying to uh, uh, awaken your spirit for so long. But you've been doing things going against and, and contrary to the word of God for so long that he has to, to literally take his hands up off of you and give you over to a reprobate mind. And so you feel as if what you're doing is right, but it is wrong. You putting your foot on the necks of the people. You are literally standing in the way of sinners and you feel that you are right. Come on, somebody, the word of God speak to us, reference to the things that we are doing and we feel in our own mind and our hearts that it is right. But it is not right. It is wrong. And so God is, is speaking now to the watchman. He's speaking to the prophets. He's speaking to his vessels. He's speaking to his mouthpiece. And he's saying, get, get out and do what I tell you to do. Warning has to go forth. It has to go forth. God cannot do anything in the earth lest he speaks to his prophets. Lest he speaks to his servants. And so God has need of you today. I got to go. God has need of you today. And so I've been watching people and I've been watching this thing for a while, man. Afraid to say what God tell them to say. Afraid to do what God tell them to do. Don't want to move when God tell them to do because they, they looking for friends and for company and for somebody that can give them a platform. Oh, um, 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 apostle so and so to the third power will literally sit me down if I say this and if I do that. But God is calling you to your ministry. God is calling you to order. God is calling you to speak to the nations. God is speaking to calling you to speak to your family. God is calling you to speak to a city. God is calling you to speak to, to, to your state. God is calling you to speak on to the people on your job. But because of you, they've been dying 
and literally some of them been dying physically and some have been dying spiritually because you've been sleeping on your post. You've been slacked on slack on your post. You've been slack concerning your duties. You've been slack concerning your duties. And so your men are dying. Come on, somebody. Soldier, your men are dying. They're dying on the battlefield because you refuse to make a decision. Because you refuse to do what you're supposed to do. You refuse to, 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 to say what you're supposed to say. You're afraid to give the command. You're afraid to give the order. But God is calling you to open your mouth. Watchman, watchman, watchman. What time is it? It's time to wake up. When the Lord began to speak this thing in my spirit, man, it did something to me. It's time to wake up people of God. He says, I hold, I will hold you accountable. Every time God told you to go and speak to someone, every time he told you to go and feed someone, every time he told you to go and give somebody this a uh, hundred dollars or go and get this grocery for this a uh, uh, single mother or the single father, every time he spoke to you, when he told you to warn them about the storm, when he told you to warn them about the waters, when he told you to warn them and you refuse to do it, he says, I will hold you accountable. Man of God, woman of God, awake from your slumber. God is going to hold you accountable. Not going, he is holding you accountable. Pastor, bishop, sir, a, a prophetess, ma'am, pastor, ma'am, God is going to hold you accountable. He says in his word in Ezekiel chapter 33, he says, if I give you a word and if I give you a warning and you blow and you do not blow the trumpet, meaning that you do not warn the people, you do not warn the people. He says, yes, they will die. They will perish. He says, but the blood of the people will be upon your own hands. And I will require it from you. You will have to answer. You are accountable. Your children are wayward, but you never spend time in, in prayer. You never spend time in fasting on behalf of your children and your family members. Uh, and you've been saved for 15 years and not one person in your family member is saved. Why? What have you been doing? The word of God asks you to compel them to come. You can't pretty up this gospel. Sometimes it has to be tough love. Sometimes you have to point out their sins. Sometimes you have to tell them when they're wrong. You have to tell them when they're on the crooked path. You have to tell them when they're in darkness. You have to. Sometimes you literally have to pull them out of the darkness. Snatch them out of their sin. Snatch them out of the blood mud. But what have you been doing? Folding your arms and sitting in a padded pewter chair with air conditioning? When God send you out into the world, when he send you out into the streets, watchman, watchman, what time is it? Did God tell you to do that? Did God tell you to go and sit down in this house and preach a good, pretty sermon? A man, I wouldn't even call it a, sermon, a motivational speech. Is that the sermon that God give you? A motivational speech to cause people to get excited at that very moment? But absolutely no change, no miracles, no blind eyes being opened. The cripple cannot walk. People dying of diabetes and cancer and sickness. And yet you're giving a motivational speech. It's time to wake up. Yes, I want to inspire the people. Yes, I want to inspire them. Yes, I want them to wake up. Yes, I want to inspire the people of God. But at what expense? Not telling them the truth. At what expense? So I can appear on some television show. So I can appear on some radio show. So people on Facebook can follow me. I'm going to say and to do what God tell me to do. Whether it is good 
whether it sounds good, whether it doesn't sound good, whether you like me, whether you do not like me, that part does not matter to me. What matters to me is at the end of my life, when I took, take my last breath and I close my eyes here in this world and open it up in eternity before my father, I want to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. Welcome into eternal rest. Welcome into the kingdom. Oh, welcome. In, man, listen, this is what I want to hear. And so if I have to offend you and if I have to step on your toes and if I have to mash on your corns, then so be it. Because I will be held accountable. I am responsible. When I heed the call and I took the mantle and I accepted it as a prophet of the Lord, as a servant of the Lord, that very same day, listen, I became accountable. It's better not to not put your hands to the plow than to put your hands to the plow and then pull it back. It's time for us to quit with these little fancy little messages and tell the people of God the truth. Tell them the truth. Tell them the truth. The truth does not sound good all the time. It does not feel good all the time. But the Lord is requiring you to tell the people the truth. Point them to God and not you. Point the pastor. Stop pointing people to you and point them to God. Point them to Jesus. Me, I can't save no one. Pastor can't save you. During the hurricane, did the pastor come and save you? Did the pastor come and save your children? Did the pastor uh, 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 um, came and build your house? Did the pastor was able to at uh, atone for your sins? Only God. And I don't want to seem insensitive. I don't want to be, I don't want to seem that way. But, 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 but listen to me, mother, when your children was in that storm, when you was holding on to your children for their life and, and the water came and, and the wind blow and, and you lost contact with your children and you cry out, was it the name of the pastor or God that you call? Yes, afterwards they can comfort you. Yes, they can come and give you soothing words. But it's God. It's God that is a keeper in the good and in the bad. God is a keeper. Whether there's death or life, God is a keeper. Whether, whether it sounds nice or it doesn't, God is a keeper. Whether people like you or they don't like you, God is a sustainer. Whether you have followers or not, God is a redeemer. Whether they say you are it or not, whether they receive you or they do not receive you, Jesus came on the earth and he had an assignment. He knew what his assignment was. And if you follow him, you will see with the life of Jesus. He was not um, um, sugarcoating the message of God. He was not sugarcoating the gospel. He wasn't sugarcoating the gospel. We see where even Jesus got upset. He went in the temple and he threw everything down. One of the disciples got so upset when they came to arrest Jesus that he, he cut off one of the heads of the centurions, one of the um, um, soldiers. We saw where Elijah called down fire to destroy the, the armies of 50s and, 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 and 100. Come on, he called fire down from heaven to destroy them. And then he turned around again and he called fire from heaven. Come on, to, to, uh, 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 lick up the water. And then he turned around and killed all of the prophets of Baal. He killed them. And you want to tell me now, oh, woman of God, you got to you gotta share the gospel with love. You can't be rough and you got to say this, you know, you got to please the people. You got to do what the young people want here. You got to start with the smoke and the lights and the, you know, you got to do this and you got to do that. You got to pre present the gospel in a certain way. You can't offend people and their feelings. The devil is a liar. I got to go. The devil is a liar.
That is the reason why the majority of us now, we on a slippery slope straight to hell. In a hand basket. Because we, we, we ran here trying to sugarcoat the gospel of Christ. Trying not to hurt nobody's feelings. Trying not to mash nobody's um, um, corns. Trying not to speak on their particular sin. The devil is a liar. There is such a thing as a righteous indignation. If I raise my voice and I get passionate and I told and I tell you to get it right, it's because I love you and I want to see your soul make it to heaven. I don't care about your flesh. I don't care about your Remy. I don't care about your Mac. I don't care about your alligator um, 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 shoes. I don't care about your seven-piece suit. I care about your soul. I don't care about your pretty face. I don't care if you bleach or not. I don't care if you, I don't, I don't care about those things. I care about your soul. Where is your soul going to spend eternity? Jesus didn't come here and, and smooth the gospel out. And say, oh, um, I'm sorry for offending you. I, I didn't mean to say it like that. No, the devil is a liar. Somebody messaged me the other day and, and they begin to tell me how, you know, they want prayers and, 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 and I got to go. I got to go. I share this with you and I got to go. And, and they want prayers. They message me and they want prayers because um, no matter what they do, they continuing to sin. They continuing to sin. So I message back. And, and, I, and I was in a position where um, I was in the middle of doing something. And so I messaged right quick and I said, I recommend or I advise uh, fasting. But as I was about to go and send another message, I was called to go and do something else. And so I didn't get right back to the person. So when I did get back to the phone, the person said, well, if that's what you advise me to do, if that's what you recommend, I could do that myself. I don't know who y'all take Marvel Lewis for, but Marvel Lewis ain't no punk. Marvel Lewis ain't no um gummy bear Christian. Marvel Lewis ain't no soft grizzled back um Christian. Let me tell you something. When I came to do the work of God, I came to do the work of God. I came straight up out of the ghetto. I know what it is to go hard. I know what it is to go hard after sin. So don't think now that I became a Christian and I all of a sudden became a punk. I all of a sudden can't open my mouth. I all of a sudden cannot speak. Who in the world? Listen, let me tell you all something. Stop watching these people and not doing what God tell you all to do. You don't talk to me any kind of way. Because if you're calling me and you asking for prayers, the minute you message me, I may not say it to you, but I pray for everyone that messaged me. I may not say it to you, but the mere fact that you message me, I automatically say a prayer for you. The mere fact that you message me, sometime even before I read the message, I say, Lord, whatever this person is messaging me for, let your will be done. Not my will, not their will, let your will be done. And so for many of you, when I don't message you back, don't think it's because I stuck up or I don't want to message you back. It's because my father tell me not to message you back because many of you, your intentions are not pure. You still in, 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 in carnality, you still going by your flesh. And so if the woman of God, if the pastor don't answer your message and don't call you back right away, you mad. We are not gods. We are servants. We are slaves to Jesus. We are slaves. We are slaves. And any man or woman of God that can't admit to you that they are slaves or that they are servants or that they die to their flesh every day, it is not a true man or woman of God. I die to my flesh every day. I fight my flesh every day. I am not God. I am not Jesus. I point you to God. I point you to Jesus. So because I don't return a call to you, I am only a human being just like you. My prayers can't do nothing for you. It's just a little bit of mercy that God give me. The little bit of mercy that he has on me. The little bit of grace that he placed on me. I could have been dead long time ago. I could have been in my sin still. 
but a little bit of grace he give me. And with that little bit of grace, I can say, God, have mercy on my sister. God, have mercy on my brother. And he is so precious. He's so wonderful. He hears my prayers. You ain't no different. Pastor don't need to lay hands on you. Pastor don't need to pray for you. You don't need to call pastor 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. Listen, people of God, I'm not saying that it's wrong, you know. But stop making people idols, man. We're not idols. We are slaves to God. We are servants. We serve you. And so the person was very rude, but if 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 if, if prayer if fasting is the only thing you could have um recommend, then I could have do I could have said that to myself. I didn't need to message you. So, mom, don't message me then. Go straight to God. And I'm not being arrogant, you know. I'm just trying to give you all the, the illustration that we us, this flesh, is nothing. If it wasn't for the little bit of grace on our life, we are nothing. Stop looking to men to, exp to, uh, to to impress them. The very people you're trying to impress and the very people you're trying to get a platform from and the very people you're trying to get put on from, the very people you're trying to walk with, the very people you think can open doors for you. Listen, when God turned this thing around and all those platforms are shut down, all the doors are shut down, then what? Or when apostle, a uh, big time show to the third power, give you a platform. And then that same apostle come back and tell you, no, you can't preach on this. Then what? You got to compromise. You got to compromise because he give you a platform. Because she give you a platform. You got to compromise the gospel. It's time to wake up. Watchman, watchman, what time is it? It's time to wake up. Stop compromising. Be the person that God called you to be. I can only be mother. I can only listen. I, I, I see. I see. Prophetess um Carla on this. Prophetess Carla is a deliverer. Listen, God give her that that gift. She, she can see a demon from a mile away. That ain't my portfolio. God ain't called me to do it like prophetess. And you think I can hate on prophetess because she do it that way? You think I can hate on my sister because God use her in that way? No. I can pray for her. Because deal, being in the deliverance ministry means that the demons come in. They, uh, they can attack. The warlocks, they come in. And so I'm going to pray for my sister. I'm going to pray for prophetess Carla. Not hate. Let's be who God called us to be. Let's begin to walk in our ministries. God said, now, I am going to hold you accountable. You're going to have to answer for the souls that I sent. You're going to have to answer. The reason why I sent them to you is because I cannot step down in men affairs. I cannot step down and literally do it myself. And so I use you as a vessel. I use you as a body in order to point them back to me, in order to clean them up, in order to assist me, in order to do what I call you to do. But you refuse to point the people back to me. You refuse to point the sheep back to me. You refuse to do it. And so because you refuse to do it, I am going to hold you accountable. You're going to be, you're going to be accountable. You have to pay for the blood of the people. Watchmen, it's time to wake up. The trumpet is blowing. Are you warning the people? The trumpet is blowing. Are you teaching the people? The trumpet is blowing. Are you telling them exactly what God is telling you? The trumpet is blowing. Are you studying this word and giving them the raw meat of God? Are you preaching from the gospel of God? Are you preaching not from your emotions and your feelings? But are you giving them the direct word of God? Watchmen, it's time to wake up. There's work to do. And I gotta go. I really gotta go. There's work to do. Watchmen, there is work to do. 
it's time to get up. Nobody has to deem you a prophet. Nobody has to deem you an apostle. Nobody has to deem you a teacher. Nobody has to deem you a bishop or reverend. Nobody has to deem you. But you hear the voice of God move. If you still can hear the voice of God, move. If you still can hear God speaking to you, move. If you still having dreams, move. If you still having visions, move. If you can still hear him, move. If you can still feel the spirit of God, move. And do what he's calling you to do. Stop with these fancy messages and these uh, uh, fancy uh, 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 inspirational um, 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 messages. And get to the raw meat of the gospel. Tell the people the truth. Tell them the truth. We are soldiers. Soldiers are not clean. Soldiers get dirty. Soldiers have to, to, to crawl in the mud. We're soldiers. Soldiers get dirty. Soldiers get blood on their hands. Soldiers get blood on their uniform. Soldiers get blood all over them. Yes, it's dirty. It's a dirty job. Somebody has to do it. The pastors out there and the, and, and the bishops and the reverence and so forth, man of God, woman of God, that doing what God tell you all to do and only got five people in the church because the majority of the people don't really want the truth. I salute you, man of God. I salute you, woman of God. Those of you that are preaching gospel, those of you that are tre um, 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 teaching not false doctrine, but the truth of God. You only have five members, ten members sporadically. And guess what? Most of them don't even have it to give you. Can I tell you, man of God, woman of God, the blessings of God is about to fall in your ministry. Those of you, the true sons and daughters of God, the true prophets of God, the true apostles, the true teachers, the true leaders of God, can I tell you that God is oh has opened up the windows of heaven and pouring you a blessing that you do not have room to contain. The mere fact that you did not compromise, the mere fact that you didn't pretty up the gospel, the mere fact that you didn't care about the Facebook followers, the mere fact that you didn't care about who loved you and who didn't, the mere fact that you went out and feed the people. The mere fact that you did that in secret. The mere fact that you prayed for the people. The mere fact that you did what God tell you to do. God is blessing you. God will multiply you. God is enlarging your territory. He is doing it because of your obedience. Come on somebody. I got to go. I got to go but I feel the, I feel the presence of the living God. It's time to stop sugarcoating with these uh, uh, pretty, pretty little uh, uh, sermons. When he ain't saving or he ain't even peasant the hearts of the people. Back in the day, I used to go to church and by the time pastor done finished praying, I don't feel like pastor was messy in the closet watching me. Convicted my spirit. To the point where I had to yell out, God, I, I, I can't no more. I can't hide no more. And even as a little girl, I felt conviction. When the man of woman would the man or woman would come in the ghetto and, 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 and pull up a mic and a speaker and start to preach. I felt it in my heart. And they would prophesy, God is about to heal. Somebody is about to die. This is about to happen. And just as they said it, it happened. Watch when it's time to get up. It's time to wake up. Go and do what God tells you to do. Get your mic. Go and order it. Order your mics. Get your speakers. Go on the streets. Go on the road. Go and do what God tells you to do. Reach to people. There are souls that are waiting on you. There, Listen, in your wombs, you carry a whole multitude. And you will have to answer. You will have to answer. That's the reason with my children. Yes, some people, they have good intention. They'll be like, well, do it this way and do it with that way. And do it at the end of the day as a mother. I have to try my best to make the best decision I can for my children. Why? Because at the end of the day, I am accountable. At the end of the day, God will look at me and say, Mama, I give you Taryn and I give you Abraham. What did you instill in them? What did you do? What did you... Listen, I am responsible. And so God give you a set of people. God has blessed you. What a set of people. You are accountable. You will have to answer. 
I gotta go. I gone for real this time. I gotta go. People of God, I love you. Listen, did God really tell you that? Did God really tell you that? Did he tell you to stay inside the church? Did he tell you just to stay right there and baptize people? Did he tell you to stay inside the church in the air condition and never reach the people on the outside? Did God tell you that? And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that God didn't tell you to start the church. He will tell you start the church. That's because he wants you to feed the people, point them to him, and then send them out. That's what we're supposed to do. Not hold on to them. God will send you a few that will be there. They will be there, literally. They will be there to hold you up until probably the day you die. He will send a, a, a royal few. He will. But the majority of people, they don't belong to you. Don't get attached because they do not belong to you. You feed them. You point them to Christ and you send them out. Blessings to all of you. I love you for watching. Watchmen, it's time to get up. If you have not yet subscribed to my YouTube page, you all know how this thing go. Go ahead, subscribe to my YouTube page. You will not be disappointed. Listen, go ahead and do that. Blessings to all of you. It is M-A-R-V-A-L-O-U-I-S. Love all of you. Have a safe afternoon. I got to go. Got to go. Blessings.